Welcome to the 5D Academy of Higher Consciousness. I'm Zarathustra and I'm broadcasting live from Los Angeles. Uh, today we're going to talk about two different things, uh, two different topics. The number one is meditation. Uh, what is meditation? Uh, there's, um, and I'm going to get into that really in a more detailed way and explaining that to you what is a real meditation because uh, there's a lot of misconception about real meditation and also we'll talk about uh, one of the participants um, wrote to me she wanted to know what do I mean by God because I use the word God all the time and uh, I'm old-fashioned you know I come from the old school so um, I'm more God oriented when I'm talking than saying spirit or existence or uh, divine oneness. So we're going to get into all of this. Anybody has got an urge for any specific meditation? Raise your hand. Or you can write on a chat box. Anybody want something specifically? No? Hilda, you're very quiet. I'm really surprised. All right, cool. Then, <clears throat> what do you want, Karen? Go ahead. No, no nothing. <laughs> no? <laughs> Don't be shy. <laughs> All right. So, okie dokie. I want you to close your eyes relax and and okay before you do that just just check this out look at me for one second just look at this thing before we go in everything that when i'm teaching including the meditations everything is really designed to lead you to help you to take your attention from the other world the world which is outside of yourself to direct your, in, your attention inwards towards the source of yourself, okay? So the idea is to bring your attention, this is the goal of the spiritual work, or at least this work. The major part of this, everything is designed, geared, and the attention is going in this direction and the direction is to help you to bring your attention your vision the way you look you're looking outside okay we we'll all do that naturally when you open your eyes you're looking at the outside world so what I want to do is what I'm trying to do and I'm helping you to do is to shift your vision and rather than looking in the outside world for you to look inside. I want you to look inside and I want you to because we're used to looking outside. So and also when I say the world outside, the world outside is including your thoughts, your emotions, your thoughts and your emotions are and are in the outside they're not inside because you're able to look at your thoughts and you're able to look at your emotions so they're outside of you they're not you if you can know and look at and observe something like I can observe my behavior I can observe my emotions I can observe my thoughts if I can observe them or be aware of them and know them, then they cannot be me. They're outside of me. So your thoughts, your emotions, and definitely the body, the meat, they're not you. They're outside of you. These three elements are outside of you because you can look at them and you can be aware of them. So what I'm asking you to do is to turn your attention inwards to the source, <clears throat> the one inside you 
Who is aware of these things? Is this making any sense to anybody or did I get you confused? Yeah? Okay, Sarah, good. You got it. Yeah, so we want to turn our attention inwards and go in and we want to do a journey, inner journey. We want to travel within ourselves. We're too busy with the outside world. We're too busy with our thoughts. We're too busy focused on our emotions. These are all outside of us. We want to go inside. We want to travel within. So, close your eyes and relax. And at this moment, don't try any mantras. Don't worry about focusing on your breathing. I want you to do this as effortless as possible. Very, very easy and simple without an effort. And you, you bring your attention inwards. And you're doing a journey inside. You're traveling inside yourself. And you're looking for the source of yourself. Because that what you are looking for can only be found within yourself. And I know you have been told and you have read this before. You have heard this from many, many different teachers. And to some of you, it doesn't make sense. It's blah, blah, blah. And you have rightfully so. You got the right to feel that this is blah, blah, blah. It's words until you touch it, until you come to it. So you turn your attention inwards and you start traveling within. And to make it more simple and easier, now we're just going to add a little flavor to it and make it simple, easier for you. So as you are, imagine you're walking this path, you're walking this road, and this road is in the desert. You're walking in the desert. The desert is all white sand, beautiful Sahara desert. Let's say you're in Egypt or you're it's white sand desert and it's only desert. There's no plants. There's no life. On, there's wind which makes noise and moves the sand. But there is no plants. It's only white sand. And you're walking on this semi-road which is dirt. And the road starts to disappear but you're just walking in this direction in the desert in the middle of nowhere you don't have a backpack you don't have water with you you don't have anything you just have your clothes on let's say you're wearing white and you're walking in the desert the temperature is perfect the sun is shining on you, shining on your face. You feel the sunshine on your face, but it's not hot. You're comfortable. You're wa walking on this path. The road disappears. But intuitively, you know you're going the right direction and you're walking. And you keep walking. There's a beautiful, there's a great wind, good wind. It's cooling you off. But you're walking in sun, in the desert, alone by yourself.
as you're walking, you arrive to a a gateway, a door which is made out of glass. It's a doorway made out of glass. So it's hard to see it till you get close to it because you can see through this glass the other side of the desert. So it's kind of deceiving, it's kind of hidden. You get closer to this doorway, to this, and it's an, an elevator made out of glass. You get close, you, the elevator, the doorway opens up. You walk into it. The door closes and the elevator begins to move. But you don't know which direction it's going. And in the beginning. Elevator keeps going. Apparently it's going under the ground. Or maybe it's going up in the sky. You can't tell the difference. And it's going deeper and deeper and deeper. But then again, you don't know the difference between it's going up or it's going down. Or maybe it's going up and down simultaneously and it's broken the laws of the physics and the logic. The elevator is going both directions simultaneously, up and down. So your mind cannot understand the difference. But it doesn't matter. You feel quiet and calm and you're going into the depths. You get a sense that you're traveling within yourself. You're no longer on the geographical map. You're no longer on the planet of Earth. You are in an exploration, an inner exploration, a journey within yourself. Finally, the elevator arrives. The door opens and you walk out. And you find yourself that you are on clouds. It seems like sky. Everything is blue. However, you are walking on some clouds. Somehow you're capable of standing on clouds because again, as we mentioned, we have broken the physics laws. We have gone beyond and you have entered into a different reality. This is not the reality you're used to. Now you're in the clouds. There's a beautiful silk Persian carpet sitting there and lying down on the lying on the clouds and you go and sit on it. There's a nice silver plate with green grapes, fresh green grapes, delicious and sweet. 
and cold. It looks like they just pulled it out of the fridge and washed. It's got water on it. It's cold. It's yummy. You take a couple of those grapes and put them in your mouth and they rejuvenate you. You no longer feel tired from your journey. You're sitting there in the clouds on the Persian carpet, the magic Persian carpet, and you're blissed out. The sky is blue. Perfect weather. The clouds are forming and out of the clouds become and comes this majestic being. This angelic being. It's an angel. It's a higher self. It's a fifth dimensional being coming from 5D. It's an avatar. It's a yoni. It's a master. This being is full of light, made out of clouds, white, glittery. It's got glitters all over it, so it's shiny. And it's approaching you. You're in an hour watching this being. There's love and light pouring out of this being approaching you. You stand up and you numbest it at this being. The being stops and namastes back at you. It's difficult to look at this being because so much love and light is pouring out of it. You're standing up in front of this magical being. This being is 14 feet tall. It's huge. But it's not threatening. and is staring at you. You're staring into each other's eyes. There's not much to say in between you and the being. Everything is being communicated telepathically. Your mind is quiet. You have no thoughts. You feel a lot of gratitude and love. You feel peace. Your questions are gone. There's no thoughts about the nature of existence. There's no thoughts about why the world is the way it is. Why you are the way you are. There's no why. It's only acceptance and love. This is beyond anything we dreamed about. Magically, you're in the sky, standing on the clouds on your Persian carpet, facing this magical, trans-dimensional being appeared out of nowhere, made out of clouds. Totally in connection. There is no description for it. You cannot define what is happening. But in your heart, you know that all is well. You are safe. You are at home. 
you're in good hands and you feel the presence of God and love your communication with this being continues it's all telepathic there is downloads of information messages you receive described as all is well all is well everything is exactly the way it needs to be you're in perfect hands nothing to worry about or concern yourself you are on the right path and you're being guided the beings message to you continuously is about all is well and you're guided suddenly like a torpedo comes out of the beings heart there is a star a ball of light is like a torpedo ball of love is being sent from the beings heart to your heart at first you get a little shocked because it's like an arrow of light a ball of light got transferred to you you can see inside your body like electricity is generated light is generated throughout your whole body your whole body turns to pure light you look at yourself and you've turned into pure light you're not afraid you are curious interested like a little child what's going on completely present available here yet silent quiet happy no questions in your heart you know that you're in a very high place and you are in the company of the wise you know in your heart her majesty the supreme being the Lord of creation he who has created himself Amon Ra is here the presence you feel blissed out because it's not just the effects of this torpedo of light and love that has entered to your body it's the sensations and the feelings that has taken over you now when you look at your body you don't see flesh you just see light you close your eyes and you can still see exactly the way your eyes are open now there's no difference you close your eyes and you look at the body that you have which is full of light you open your eyes and you see this trans-dimensional being the angel of light made of it of clouds standing in front of you staring at you 
with love and compassion and acceptance. The trans-dimensional being telepathically tells you to take a deep breath. You take a deep breath. Tells you to take another deep breath. And then it comes to the third one, which I like you all to take a deep breath with me. And as you begin to take the, your third deep breath, the trans-dimensional being, which made out of clouds and love and light, it, the material it's made out of is different than what you're used to, enters into you through your breath. The being becomes like dust, breath, air, wind, and starts to move inside you. As you take a deep breath, the being enters in you through your heart. And it's no more standing in front of you, but now it's in you. You have an encounter with your 5D self, the fifth dimensional self. Your awareness begins to change. Your understanding begins to expand. You don't have any questions. You're silent. You're quiet. You are still and you're happy. However, you simultaneously realize that you have had an encounter with your own divine self. It is your own majestic being, the spirit, your soul, your higher self, your 5D self. That you had encountered. It is you. That you're looking for. Suddenly, you realize that you have wings, which you never knew you did. You open your wings. They're huge. Big, white, angelic wings that you open. And now that you have wings, you're just going to give them a try. At first, it's a little bit curious. Maybe there's a moment of surprise, but there is no fear or anxiety. It's only the wonder of a child exposed to the world of wonders. You keep opening your wings and play with them. And naturally, you are going to fly. You begin to fly. Instead of flying over the planet Earth and look at the wonders of the world, you begin to fly directly to the sun.
you begin to fly towards the sun. And as you're flying towards the sun, you lose yourself in the light. The intensity of the light turns into the intensity of the love. And the love becomes unbearable. It gets stronger and stronger. And you can see that you're merging into the sun and disappearing into the light. But there's no fear. Simply being one and diving into it. Disappearing into the oneness. And in that disappearing, there is no you any longer. You have become one with that which you've been seeking. And in that, you lost your identity. And you don't know who you are anymore, but it doesn't matter because you know that you are. And you are the greater you. The rest is not important. Okay. So, <clears throat> I would like to talk about meditation and uh, if, again, if you have any comments or questions, you want to ask me anything. Uh, those of you who are new with me, we have everybody muted. So, you're welcome to either wave at me uh, if I see you, I will unmute you and we can talk or you can write on the chat box and I'll check the messages and we go from there. So, meditation. This has been brought up to me, people have been asking me about different kind of meditations, how important it is to do meditation. Uh, what does an advanced spiritual seeker should do? What sort of meditations they have to do? Why don't the meditations sometimes uh, don't carry you home? And there's a lot of different questions. And there's a lot of confusion when it comes to meditation. Um, as the purpose of the meditation, how does it work? Where is it going to take you? Is this going to take me home? and give me freedom. So let's just dissect meditation and talk about it and bring some clarity to it and making sure that we understand the whole thing. And then it makes it a lot easier once you understand what, what is meditation. Majority of us, when we speak of meditation, you're expecting this. You, this is the picture. I'm going to bring my hands closer so it shows in different cameras. So you're sitting there. You're in a lotus position. Maybe you're sitting like this. You have your eyes closed. And that's the picture of meditation we have. Uh, a lot of times in a lot of magazines, you see a beautiful girl sitting in a lotus position and she's meditating. Nowadays, you know, in a yoga, yoga clothing, you see a girl or a woman sitting there meditation. Most of, most of, most of the times is, is uh, a girl. You see guys too. But that's the picture you have in your mind of meditation means that you're sitting somehow like that and you have your eyes closed and you got your 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 legs crossed that's the picture you see of meditation 
but meditation does not have any looks it doesn't look like anything there is no absolutely any kind of looks any particular posture that is the trademark of meditation you don't have to sit to meditate or lie down to meditate you don't even have to be standing still to meditate. Meditation doesn't have any kind of looks. So then what is meditation? Well, meditation is what we're doing. Let's say, for example, I did a guided meditation. That's what it's called, a guided meditation. Or you're doing a silent meditation or we're doing active meditation sometimes we need to do active meditations to quiet the mind and we've done a lot of it I have a lot of active meditations that I do in my workshops and in my retreats um, we haven't done much active meditations in past couple of years at the Academy but we used to do active meditations a few years ago back in the Academy too um but none of these things whether it's a guided meditation it's an app you're downloading and you're listening to visualization it's to quiet your mind to get silent to get rid of your anxiety fear worry to help you sleep none of these things and none of the meditations i give you none of them is meditation nothing we do whether it's sitting visualizing focusing on our breath visualizing bringing your attention on your third eye listening to soft music controlling your breath saying a mantra or being silent or being active none of any of these and millions of the meditations that you can download on YouTube or podcast or have an app none of them are meditation none of them so now the next question is then what is meditation what do you mean it's not meditation Meditation is not an action. Let's understand this part. Meditation is not something you do. So let's say I say we're doing the academy and the first 20 minutes or half an hour of the academy is meditation. Okay, so now we'll come and sit down and we're meditating. So now it's an action this becomes an action It's something you're going to do it's like you decide to go to the gym and to work out so that's an action you go to a yoga class you go to a Pilates class that's action you're going to an exercise class or you're going to a meditation class that's again an action because it's something that you're going to do so meditation is not something you do it's not an action it's not a sport for example when you have a an orchestra visiting your city and there's like 30 musicians they're all sitting there and what do they do when they first the members of the orchestra they arrive and they're just getting themselves ready they make themselves comfortable they pull out the instruments and they start to tune in their instruments so they spend an hour time or an hour and a half tuning in their instruments before this grand concert happens let's say you happen to arrive to the the hallway you know this stadium this 
concert hall that you arrive to and you're sitting there and you're somehow they let you in early and you're sitting there and watching the musicians tuning in their instruments so this what they're doing is not the concert you're not watching the concert you're watching the musicians tuning in their instruments so they're playing with their instruments they're pulling the strings whatever they're doing but that's not meditation that that's not the concert the concert starts after they tuned in their instruments and they're ready they're situated all the instruments are ready and now they're going to do the concert are we okay so far does everyone understand what i'm saying do you are you with me you're here good so when the concert starts the musicians begin to play music that's the concert but before that it was preparing they were preparing their instruments to to do the concert similarly it's the same exact thing exactly the same thing there's no difference what we do is when we sit and we call it meditation it's not meditation it's preparation for meditation you are preparing yourself for meditation so you're sitting there and and you're practicing every day let's say you're doing breath meditation you're keeping your attention on your breath you're breathing in and you're breathing out or you're keeping your attention on your third eye or you do a visualization meditation like what we did earlier today that's preparation for meditation it's not we call it meditation I call it meditation I've already made five of them uh, that three of them been is on my website the other two are coming out but those are not real meditations we call them meditation but they're not real meditation it's preparation for meditation we're tuning in and getting ourselves ready to live a meditative life that's what we're doing so when we're sitting here in silence or I'm sitting like this I'm tuning myself in for the actual meditation the actual meditation is in life the actual meditation when you're living your life on daily basis an ordinary life not when you're on top of a hill not when you're with your guru in India not when you're making love to your loved one and you're in ecstasy that is meditation by the way but ordinary life everyday life mundane life that's why I say meditation is not an action meditation is something that happens on its own accord you can't meditate you can't just go there and sit there and try many of you have tried that many of you come to me which I'm included I used to be there too okay so let's not exclude me I don't want to make it sound like oh I'm so high up from you now that I don't have this thing no 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 it's not it I, I've been there I know what it's like you sit there and you try to meditate and the only thing you don't do is meditate your mind is all over I didn't pay this bill I didn't do this how come she never called me uh, oh my god she's so sexy uh, oh my god I gotta fix my car oh my god I didn't take my kid uh, I didn't buy this thing for my kid I have to cook for my husband or my wife or I didn't pick up the clothes from a dry cleaner blah 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 your mind goes everywhere except being being quiet you're all over 
half an hour goes by, an hour goes by, and you haven't done any kind of relaxation. You just, your mind's been busy. Because that's not, med meditation is not something you do, it's not an action. I can't go pick up a basketball and go to the court and practice and shoot hoops. Because that's an action, I go for practice. I can go be rowing, you know, on a boat, or I'm running, or I'm training, I'm lifting weights, or I'm dancing, those are all actions. So the true meditation is not an action. So you can decide, I'm going to do meditate. Meditation must happen on its own accord. Meditation comes naturally. It comes on its own. What we're doing with what we're, what's happening right now, whatever jumping jacks we're doing, whatever techniques we're using, is preparation for meditation. Okay? Pay attention. We sit here and close our eyes. That's preparation for meditation. That's not meditation. We call it meditation just for simplicity of exp explaining some sort of relaxation technique and some sort of method to take us beyond the mind because we're trying to learn how to be meditative and how to live our meditation. Real meditation in real life is to be present, to be here, to be awake of your surrounding, to be aware of yourself, to be aware of your action, and to be present with your action. So we're doing all these jumping jacks and all these sort of called meditation in order to learn how to be here in life how to be present here. So when I'm drinking my water, oh my God, this water is kind of sweet. Nice water. So now I'm present with water, drinking water. I'm not somewhere else. How many times you're making love to somebody and you're thinking about business, you're thinking about work, you're thinking of someone else? How many times that has happened to you? You're in the middle of having sex, which is a great activity. I highly encourage it. If you never try to try it, you may like it. And you're somewhere else. You're completely somewhere else. That has happened to me many, many times. I'm not there. I'm everywhere but there. And that's a grand event that happens in life. You have to be lucky that is happening to you because you don't always get it. So how many times you're having this great meal? You go to this nice restaurant, you spend all this money on this meal, and then you're getting a, your mind is somewhere else. You're worried about your daughter because she went on a party and she didn't come home, or you're worried about your bills, or you're worried about your health, and you're not there. You're eating this great, incredible meal that's been prepared for you, and you don't even taste it. You don't even know what you ate, or you're on your phone. You go sit to dinner with your family, with your partner, with your kids, and you're all on the phone. Everybody's somewhere else except being here at, at, at dinner. You understand what I'm saying? Yes, no? Do you, do you, do you relate to this? Anybody? Are you relating to what I'm saying? 
Good. Now you, you, now you're getting a glimpse of what I'm talking about. Real life meditation is to be present here, to be here. You are, we are doing all these other spiritual work in order for us to be able to be here. And here, there could be pain or there could be pleasure. Here, it could be fun or it could not be fun. It doesn't, it, you know, it will make any difference. But can you be present here? Which is a very, very difficult thing happening right now in the world from old to young. The older people didn't have the information, the flow of the availability of teachers and information. So they're not so much on their phone when you're sitting talking to them. They're present, but their mind is in their past or worry about future. The younger generations, they got hit by cell phones and distraction. So they have a very hard time being here, being present with you. So their attention, putting their attention, although they're not regimented, so their mind is still not so brainwashed. So it's easier to deviate them on the right track, but but now they have this issue of not being able to concentrate because they're distract distracted they're everywhere but here. So both generations suffering from the same thing in different ways. So I just want to go over this one more time before I move into the next thing. I want to make sure you get this. Let me make it very clear, okay? So I'm going to, just in case you jumped in, you're new, you just came, and you weren't listening or you were distracted with your cat or dog or your partner or your phone rang or whatever happened, okay? Or you had to go to the bathroom or you had to go to the kitchen to pick up some fruits or water. Let me go over it one more time. I want to make sure you understand this because it's important for you that you get it. Meditation is not an action. So whenever I come and sit down and I say, okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to sit there and meditate, I'm not saying it's a bad thing. I'm not saying don't do it. Doing this is a lot better than being in front of TV listening to CNN and getting filled up with a lot of fear and blah, blah, blah. But let's not, let's be clear about and understand and get the big picture. Meditation is not an action. Meditation is not something you do. Meditation is something that will happen to you. It's a natural, natural occurrence. Meditation is not an action. Meditation is not something you do. Meditation is something that happens naturally. It's an occurrence that happens. And it happens to everybody on this planet. Everybody at certain point are being meditative about what they do or what they don't do. A manipulated meditation is not really have no value. When we try to manipulate it, to force it to happen, it's as absolutely of no value to you. So the work we're doing, all this jumping jacks, if we're doing any kind of active meditations, if it's a laughing meditation, crying meditation, uh, it requires action. If we're just, I don't know, doing Kriya Yoga, you got one finger here, one finger there, and you have to breathe from here and breathe from there. Or you do TM, 
transcendental meditation or whatever meditation you do in the world, I don't care what that is. All of them are preparing you, you're tuning your instruments in order to do the concert. So we're doing this kind of meditation, we're doing the practice so we can be present and one in daily life and be meditative, to have the big vision, to not being reactive, not showing reaction to events, actually being able to step back and use your wisdom and intelligence before you react, before you say something, before you get angry. So meditation comes into your daily life. If your car breaks down on, on an inter, interaction intersection, all of a sudden the car is not starting, you don't panic and scream and yell and cry and not to what to do. You stay centered because you learn how to be meditative. So you're centered, you take a deep breath, you're looking at your options. Okay, the car is stocked. There is 50 different cars around me. Everyone's honking their horn. They're angry. They're upset because my car broke down. You get out of your car very calm, very cool, very, cool, very collected. You get out of your car. You pull the hood up. You take a look. Okay, you can't fix it. You look around, you ask a couple of strong guys to help you to push the car, to pull the car on the corner of the street so you can call tow truck or mechanic to come and help you. But you're not doing it out of panic because you're practicing, you're meditative. You have learned how to do things in life meditatively. Now you're in meditation. You understand? You have brought, otherwise, what good does it do? You sit there and you're quiet and your meditation for one hour. You're one with God. Great, fantastic. But the moment you turn on the TV and they say, oh, there's going to be mandatory vaccination or there is a draft and you have to go to war, you know, we're going to send you all to war or whatever and you're panic and you're, your high blood pressure and you have to take your cholesterol pills and you're da, 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 and you're making phone calls and you're crying well you were just one with god what happened to that or you just came from bali or you just came from india you were with your guru and you were in this such a high space and as soon as you entered and you came back to los angeles and you're a mess so what happened to that six months of meditation? What good did that do for you if you can't exercise it in every moment life? How does your spirituality help you in every moment life in face of adversities and things not going your way? Where is your meditation then? You understand? Comprende? <laughs> Hi, Sarah. Hello. Ah, ni nice seeing you. All right. Is this your first time here? Yes, it is. Welcome. Thank you. And, and what great. country? What country are you from? Um, the United States. Or oh, you're in the U.S.? Yeah. Where, where in the U.S.? Washington State. Washington State. Mm -hmm. Beautiful place. When it's yes. nice and sunny, it's heaven, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> With all those islands around. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Long time ago, I came and spent three months there. And I loved it, but it was sunny most of the time. Good, yeah. Yeah, I, I fell in love with it. I loved it then. Yeah, it's beautiful here. Yeah, I love it too. Yeah, 
It is a beautiful place. Well, welcome. Thank you very much for having me. Yeah, welcome anytime. Hi, Eva. How are you, Miss Eva? I I try to unmute you. You have to unmute yourself. But well, when you unmute yourself, talk to me because you have a question. No, no, it's no. I don't have any question. Oh, you don't have any question. You weren't waving at me. Yes, I I got what you said. Oh, you, you got okay. Good. Good. Thank you. Hi, brother. Uh, hi, um, Zarasustra. I was reflecting on the fact I'm Northern California. Of course, you're Southern California, and we're beset by fires. Lately? Uh, very serious ones. And um, what, When did that happen? Fires? Yeah. You, I mean, you're not looking. You're not looking at your TV, I gather. I, I, I barely look at any kind of news, so I'm, okay. I'm sort of ignorant. But I get my news from you guys and from my family, so that's the only okay. time I get news. But well, go ahead are, and tell me. There are fires in in Los Angeles for about a week, two weeks, or more, three weeks, in various parts. Uh, now I don't know Los Angeles very, very well, so, and it's immaterial where they are. There are some up the road from me. I'm in Northern California, and in fact, my former home, I'm not lit, we sold it and we moved down a little bit, but it's, it's in the midst of the flames at the moment. So okay. I'm very taken up, I guess, uh, logically and emotionally, plus they're kind of coming down the hills and trying to get a bag ready and get this and medications and the usual things that they go on with that you have to be ready to go. When they say evacuate, you evacuate. So anyhow, that's all the background. I didn't even know I could perhaps have the time to come and attend today. But okay. anyhow, drop back to meditation, which is the point of why we're here. Um, it struck me very strongly as you explained, well, meditation is the active lifestyle. So, of course, this is an excellent time for me to practice. It's so much easier when you're on your cushion. But right now, it's kind of where the rubber meets the road and uh, that's the real essence of what is the quality of my meditation. So I just found it very helpful. And, um, you know, as a, uh, well, okay, I've meditated all my life. Well, this is an excellent time to actually put it into practice more, you know, not just the, the serenity of it, but, but when you're surrounded, right. because you're saying it's how you're living your life at any given moment. And of course, that's fed by the times you've been on your cushion or whatever else. But, um, you know, just to say that it's an interesting, it's a good time for me to hear this. And for yeah, all of um, us, we all yeah. have different circumstances clearly right. to affect us, you know? So thank yes, you. Yes, absolutely. You're welcome. And thank you, for, today. thank you for sharing. Let me, uh, yeah, thank you. I very much appreciate it, Britta. Uh, did, did everybody hear what she said? Can you hear when somebody else talks? Yeah, okay, great. So, basically, all the work we're doing is when it comes, I'm only right now talking in, in the, uh, uh, the frame of meditation. So, we doing the work, we're meditating, we're learning how to be calm and quiet and centered, which is beautiful, okay? But we have to be able to put this into practical life, otherwise it has no value. So, and that's one of the reasons I wanted to bring this subject and talk about it because there's a lot of different ideas and confusions. People think if you do awaken or if you reach a state of samadhi, 
and if it's long term and you're in this place people think that you're invincible and if the fires are coming down and they're getting close to your home you shouldn't feel anything or if you you should be uh, indifferent to it uh, no you could be meditative you can pack your things get your stuff get ready to get out of the fires way but in a cool way in a relaxed way not out of panic not from acting chaotic so there is quality you will be missing a lot of things if you are acting out of panic and chaos and fear and anxiety versus if you're calm and quiet and you're meditative you're still maybe doing the same thing you're packing your things getting things ready to get out of the fire's way but there is a quality in it one brings suffering the other one doesn't bring any suffering and personally I don't like to suffer so I do whatever I can not to suffer now that doesn't mean I go, don't go through pain pain is a different story than suffering you know you can experience pain because there is no way you live in a body and live in this life and not experience pain it's impossible as long as you got desires your desire is going to lead you to pain and pleasure so you're going to have to experience both of them but suffering is a different story so that's another subject we can talk about it Hilde if you want to hold me to it and I can talk about it next week and we can get deeper into the difference between suffering and pain um, so hold me accountable so I don't deviate and I go into a different direction yeah so basically it I just wanted to clear this I wanted to make sure if you get a chance later on listen to this recording again I highly recommend it the the Academy events that you feel affected you feel like there was value in it uh, thank God we can record these and I sometimes actually I normally don't like to watch my own videos <laughs> believe it or not I'm making confession I'm the last person watching my own videos and I'm so impatient and I'm and so I just go through them and a lot of times I need to sit down and watch a video and edit it and you know I sit with with Amir uh, or my videographer and I need to go through the video and do it and I'm the last person who does it however lately I've been watching our Academy videos uh, and I check them out uh, a day or two days after I do an Academy broadcast and I sit down and uh, and I sometimes like wow you know did I say this or this is interesting I like that I don't remember saying that so there's a lot of things you're gonna pick up in them that you miss the first time because there's so much so sometimes you need to go back and listen to something two or three times to really get it to digest it so uh, I do recommend that when you get a moment if you feel connected with this broadcast and there is something in it that you like listen to it again so you you really get it so it wasn't like something that went through and you didn't really understand all of it you heard meditation you heard Zarathustra said meditation is not an action blah 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 but you really didn't get it so listen to it a couple more times or one more time and really um, grog so good anybody has any other questions anything else in this area or any area that you want me to talk to you or help you if I can Hi Suzanne. Hi Zarathustra. Hi sweetheart. Nice seeing you. 
Nice seeing you. <laughs> yeah. Everything's good? Yes, so far everything is good. Are you working these days or? No. Or no. I working in March. Okay. You haven't worked you haven't worked since March. Yes, and it's really okay. a hard lesson for me. Right. Because what what I'm part sorry. of it is hard? You know, that I don't have to work, that I don't have this structure during the day. And uh, I mean, without working, no money, you know, so um, it's really tough at the moment for me. I mean, what you are talking, I try to be meditate or to, to live a meditating life since years. But these days with this coronavirus and the whole lockdown and all these uh, damages without having work, it's really, really tough to stay in that place. Right. So when you say it's tough to stay in that place, what do you mean by that place? What is that it place? It's a meditating place because I did meditate my whole life like you know when i was with the children for me it was a meditation when i go out with my dog into the forest it's a meditation when i'm cooking it's a meditation like this it, okay it was since i don't know 15 years i lived that way but in those days to stay in that kind of yeah okay it's, it's i get really, it it's too okay. difficult for me. Right. Like, right. oh my God, I will get bankrupt. I will lose my house. I will not get a job anymore. I, and all those things in the mind, you know? Yes. The mind will go all over the place. Yes. So it's yeah. really, this is tough for me, but you know. Right. Right. I, I, I understand. So, okay, you, you brought a couple of things, which is really nice in uh, the uh, related to the subject of what we're talking today, uh, which is wonderful what you said. You mentioned that when things were going semi, sort of your way, okay, you were working, you were making money, and you had your rhythm, okay? Yes. When things somehow were going your way, then it was easy to meditate or it was easy to be present with whatever you do. Yes, I mean, you know, my, my job is not always easy and it's not easy to raise three children without a husband and it's not easy to earn enough money for four. I mean, I have this like for 15 years, you know. But this was not difficult for me. I, I could yeah. operate with all these things and it was not an easy life. Yes. But this situation now is top, top, top. Yes. So, yeah. so the heat went up and Absolutely. it was like, exist <laughs> yes. yeah. existence said, you know what? Susanna, you've been doing, you've been doing a good job. You've been a good. You've yeah. been a good girl. You've been a good mommy. You're you responsible. can develop, yeah. Mm -hmm. You've been you've been trying. You've been working. You've done everything right. Mm -hmm. We're proud of you, and now we're promoting you to the next level. We're going to take you to university. Absolutely, this is what I'm in now. <laughs> so, so you're brought up to the next level. Yes. Yeah, and the next level is to turn up the heat. Mm -hmm. So in a way, in some ways, you may experience like you're, you're on a grill. It's like they, they picked up this piece of filet mignon and they put it on the barbecue and the barbecue is hot and you're burning. Absolutely. Yes. Right. Exactly. And there is no escape, you know. And like, there is no escape. escape. No, there's nowhere to go. No, that's right. No. I've had that happen to me, that they, they get you by the balls. Let me just put it in a very simple layman term. Yes. Existence <laughs> got you by the balls and there is no way out. Yeah, and now I'm cooking. 
and now you're cooking. Yes. Exactly. Right. Right. So How do you know you're cooking? I feel it. You know, there are days when it's easier to to cooperate with this and there are days when when I could cry the whole time or when I'm desperate or when I don't know, you know, what to do with my day, you know, and it's, it's like up and down. So that's why I, I, I feel it. Okay. So now we're talking about Somehow I didn't want to get into this, but we're directed in that direction, so I can't keep my mouth shut, so I have to talk. <laughs> <laughs> See, that's... Oh, they come. <laughs> right, okay, yeah. So, What is happening here is very typical that happens to the spiritual seeker. And you're not the only one. It happens to all of us. And basically, literally every spiritual seeker, everyone who wants to get to the point has to go through different stages in your spiritual involvement. This is different stages on this path of self-realization because you're invited. You've been invited. You've been chosen by the boss. And I don't know why you or why me. Those things are beyond my understanding and I'm even not going to try to understand it. But it's an invitation. So God comes and gives you a big kiss. And you're fucked because you fall in love with God and you're impregnated. And now the love is so enormous that the desire for another kiss from God is so strong. This pulls you so strongly that nothing else matters. But in the meantime, this fire that you have for self-realization also, in the meantime, it's very painful. There's a lot of pain with it. And the pain of this wanting union with the, 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 with the beloved, wanting to... So you, you're kind of like, can't go back to your old days and be sleepy, you know? And just, you say, I wish I could be like my sister or my family or my friends or whatever. And they don't give a shit about any of these things and they believe the world is real and that's their world and I wish I could go back. But you're screwed because you can't go back anymore and you can't go forward because you're not in this blissful state all the time that you don't feel the pain. So you're in between. It's really weird. You're pregnant and you're like eight months pregnant or seven months pregnant. You can't get rid of this baby but I'm so bloated that I can't do anything and it's painful and it's uncomfortable. So when am I going to be relieved? So it's kind of in between. That's one way of looking at it. Another way of looking at it is the passage. You are in this evolutionary, this awakening path that you got invited. God came and kissed you or made love to you and got you pregnant. And now you can't go back and you only have to go one way. You can't stop. You have to go forward. So you're in this level. You get to this level and say, okay, you're good. Now we want you to go through this passage. You have to go through this passage. You enter into the passage of course, it's not voluntarily. All of it happens involuntarily because if you can choose, all of it is going to be peaches and cream. So you have to go through the passage and you can't see the, the light at the end of the tunnel. Mm -hmm. And 
and you keep going and you keep going and there's storms coming and there's hail coming and you don't have anything to cover yourself you're hungry you haven't eaten for two days you don't have any water it's cold you're freezing and you're going to this passage and then what happens is if you hang in there and you keep going and you keep going and you keep going and there are moments you want to give up but somehow they give you a hand and they lift you up and then eventually you're going to see some light at the end of the passage and when you finish and you come on the other side of the passage then they come and say good girl you you know we're going to give you a break so now you enter in this beautiful garden it's beautiful grass flowers everything fruits food temperature is good it's safe warm loving right now you're going through this passage that's where you're at yes absolutely. it is a pet yeah and you're being tested yeah. now maybe you can't do anything about your economic situation obviously you can't do anything about COVID-19 we can't do anything to take things back in the old days no <laughs> and the mind starts to come and there's mind bombardments so it's like you wake up in the morning and the B-52s are bombarding, you know, when they were bombarding, I don't know, Vietnam or Saigon or whatever, B-52s. You remember during the 70s, you're seeing all these bombs falling down? So your mind is really bombarding, bombarding you. So what do you do? How do you deal with this? You can't change your finances and where you are and you can't change the climate of where we're at with the virus and blah 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 so what is it I can do what parts can I change what you can do is the recognition of what is happening to recognize it means the awareness comes and recognizing what's going on and what happens is the mind starts to bombard bombarding you with all these worries and fears and everything of what's going to happen to me what's going to happen to me what's going to happen to me in if you know me it's all about what's going to happen to me it's the i thought me okay mm -hmm. me i'm the most important person in this world to me there's no one else more important than me to me. <laughs> you may say, what a selfish spiritual teacher. <laughs> what a selfish spiritual teacher, but I have to tell you the truth. I'm the most important person in this world to me. <laughs> I come first. I'm sorry. I love you. Mom, I love you, but I come first. I can't help it. I can't come second when you first wake up and you and like everybody else on the planet there's seven billion people they say on the planet which I don't know there could be like 700,000 people on the planet I have no idea how many people there are they can give me any number they want every single person who wakes up in the morning their first thought that goes through their mind is the same thought I don't care you're white, black, Indian, uh, Chinese, you practice Judaism, Catholicism, or Muslim, or whatever you do. Everyone has the same thought when they wake up in the morning, and that thought is me, is the I thought. I am, I am Zarathustra, I am a man, I'm Persian, I'm American, I'm da 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 da, I'm a teacher, I'm, I'm a dad, I'm a mom whatever is the story your story comes with this thought of I and naturally the I thought me 
who's the most important person on the planet to me, is concerned with its well-being. And that's a quality that it's been endowed and it's been registered in our DNA when we were born because the unit needs to take care of itself and and the unit wants to self-preserve itself otherwise at your very first encounter in the jungle with the first tiger you would be food for the tiger so you got to learn to run away and protect yourself and your family so me I is is the major part what's going to happen to me and even when we come to a meeting like this you're not going to come back again to this webinar if you don't get something out of it so what's your first question when you come here inside what's 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 in there for me okay well, why don't I go watch another seminar that's about how to create more wealth in real estate? Because the me inside is not interested in that. The me here is inside is interested in freedom. So what's in it for me always comes back to the I thought. Me. I. Now, this I is only happy, this me, we call him Zarathustra is only happy when he gets what he wants. So I joke with my friends, I'm a very easy person to satisfy. Just give me the best of everything. And as long as everybody does, as long as everything goes my way, I don't have a problem. As long as everything goes my way in this life, I don't have a problem, I'm very happy. I'm only not happy when things don't go my way. Sometimes things go your way, the other times don't go your way. So what happens when things don't go my way and things get heated up and it gets really difficult in life? What parts of it gets difficult? It gets difficult because I'm not getting what I want. I'm not getting what I think I deserve. I'm, or I'm not even getting my needs met, my basic needs. I need a bed. I need a roof over my head. I need some heat. I need water, electricity. These are basic needs I have, and I'm not getting those either. But I should be getting it because I'm worthy, because I, I work hard, because I'm... Whatever age I am, I should be getting these things and I'm not getting these things. So what happens then? What happens is because I have a preference. I do prefer this to go my way. I want things to go my way. I want to get what I want and I'm not getting what I want. So then I start to suffer because I have a preference. I prefer things to go this way. So when things don't go my way, I suffer. Suffering comes. If there's two things here, if you can develop an attitude, you can just incorporate things in your life. And I'm not just talking to you, Suzanne, I'm talking to everybody. Uh, all, my, all the audience all over the world, whether you're watching me live or you're later on watching this video, or if it's a podcast, whatever it is, is here we are. Here's the key. If I can develop this within myself, an indifference and no preference, if I can be a person who doesn't, who doesn't have an attachment to his preference. I prefer the weather to be like the way it is right now in Los Angeles because I love it. Maybe a little bit cooler because I don't <laughs> like cold and I don't do well. But it's not the way I want it all the time. Half of the time or most of the time it's different. And if I really have a strong attachment to 
things must go this way and they don't go this way, then I'm going to suffer because I have an attachment to the results. I'm invested into the results. I want results to be this way. As long as things go this way, I'm happy. When things don't go the way I want them, then I suffer. Suffering comes. So what if I, I'll use another example. So for those of you who maybe didn't get this part, I want to make sure you get this part, then I go to the next explanation. And I'm trying to make it as simple as I can. So let's say I meet this young lady or lady, whatever. And I'm very invested. I want her to marry me, okay? And I'm doing whatever I have to. You know, I do all the jumping jacks. You know, I'm trying to, to sweep her from under her feet and be kind and be loving and be generous and do everything she wants and, and be romantic and be the ideal man that she wants. I'm doing everything. I'm investing heavily on her to say yes. Say, yes, I marry you. So I do all these jumping jacks and spend all this money and do all the stuff I have to do to change myself, to appear the way she wants me to be, all the things right, like what you did, Suzanne, 15 years, you did everything right. And now, at the last moment when I go see her and I kneel and I open the box and show her the ring, she says no. I'm not ready to marry you. I don't want to marry you. I don't know, blah, 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 whatever is the reason. She says no. And I'm heavily invested. It's been three years that I'm investing on this thing. And now she says no. Actually, I want to go to India. I want to go travel, blah, 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 blah. And I'm not ready. And now I'm deeply broken. Because I didn't get what I want. Things didn't go my way. And I'm very invested in it. This was a big investment. Three years, lots of time, money, jumping jacks, and now the answer is no. So, if I'm heavily attached, attached to the result, and results don't go my way, then I'm going to suffer. Suffering comes. And suffering is not fun. However, if I've been able to develop an attitude of indifference to the results, and if things go my way, they're perfect, and if things don't go my way, I'm okay. I'm fine. Because I love myself. I found peace within myself. And I trust that life will provide another situation. Existence is what is feeding me. Existence is the one who brings love to me. Existence is what opens doors for me or closes doors for me. It's God, it's spirit, it's existence that gives me everything I need and provides for me. Because I'm the son of existence. They created me. I didn't create myself. Not that I remember I created myself. Something created this dude. That thing is responsible to take care of this guy. I'm not my own responsibility. I know some of you may just be a little bit shocked about this comment. I am not, and you are not your own responsibility. God is responsible for you because he or she is the one created you. You didn't create yourself. If you did, you would have looked different. You would have had a different body. You would have a lot of money and you would have a lot of lovers. You would never get sick. You would never cut yourself. You would look like 
an avatar, woman or man. Obviously, you didn't create yourself. And if you did, you did a shitty job. <laughs> because there's a lot of defects in there. So you need to go back to school and learn how to create human beings. Anyway, you're fine the way you are. I love you because I love myself. I love myself. <laughs> <laughs> I love myself. But anyway, back into business. Whomever has created this is the person, the one, the entity is responsible for your well-being. So if I develop this attitude, if I learn and practice this being of trusting existence, it's easier for me to say it because I had five near-death experiences, five times. Three times out of that, five times, I should have not been alive. I cheated life. And I'm here on this planet on borrowed time. I should have been dead. Something didn't want me to die. Something saved me in the last moment. Otherwise, it would have been impossible. It's not possible for what happened to me and you come out of it untouched and alive. You should have been dead or dismembered. None of it happened. That thing is also responsible to take care of my well-being and, and feed me. Because I don't have that power of manipulating existence to go my way. But I tried. Definitely. I tried many times. It doesn't work. So that's one is the trust also is to develop this attitude that things go my way, I'm very happy. Things don't go my way, I am okay. Because I am not investing on my happiness based on what happens in the world or based on a woman says yes to me or says no or my friends or anyone. If I based my happiness on what is happening in the world, I would be in trouble and I would be suffering. If my happiness was based on things go my way. So that's one part I recommend that we look at and develop that attitude. Because this whole thing, this passage you're going through right now, Suzanne, this entire ordeal is about faith. It's about trust. It's about staying in this place, staying still. It's okay your mind goes crazy. It's okay that you get mind bombardment and the thoughts coming that what's going to happen to me? What am I going to do with my kids? I'm going to lose my home. Da -da 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 -da. All of these thoughts are okay. Don't beat yourself up if you're bombarded by a million thoughts. You can't control the thoughts. You can't control your emotions. You're not in control of neither your thoughts, nor your emotions, nor your body. You can't control any of them. All three of them do what they want to do. And you can't do anything about it. We've tried to manipulate it. We all did. It doesn't work. At one point, you have to pull back and say, okay, it's okay for my mind to be bombarded. But you know what? I can see it. If I see a, bomb a mind which is bombarding, then it has no effect on me because I can still see it. I still am aware of it. I can still see things. Maybe they take my home away. Maybe my children they go. Maybe I lose my everything. But I still am and I'm still aware. The awareness is still here. So you're going through this passage. This passage is about trusting. Trusting God. Trusting spirit. 
that which brought you in this life, that which gave you children. That force is the one who is responsible to take care of you and take care of your children. Feed you, feed your children, provide you with food, shelter, water, electricity, communication. That's God's job. Put the pressure on God, not yourself. When we think we're the one who's choosing this life and responsible, then you become a human being. You become a person. And the person is going to get into trouble. You got to defer the responsibility to God. Get out of the way. Let the boss take care of things. So this is going to this pas passage is the test of trust. Can you endure pressure without breaking down? Can you stay focused? Can you keep going? And your mind's going to get bombarded. We're going to do that to you. We're going to give you a million thoughts. We're going to have your emotions go up and down. And your body will act weird. The money flow is going to get tighter. Because the money flow is connected. It's the life. It's your being. It's your life. Or you're dead. So the money is connected to your root chakra. That's a root chakra. That's a serious thing. Naturally, you're going to be panicking because we're talking about life and death. Money is life. It's associated that if you have money, you can live. If you're going to lose all your money, oh my God, I'm going to go on the street. What's going to happen to me? So the fear of death comes. What's going to happen to me? So what I recommend, my dear sister, and to everybody, and I understand, in order not to suffer, because we all go, I've gone through periods of being broke. I mean, it's happened so many times, especially being in this work that I do. You've got so many ups and downs. You've got a lot of money, and then all of a sudden, everything's gone. And you're broke, and you just have to finance all these different projects and pay for everything, and all of a sudden, you don't have anything. Oh, my God, what the hell am I going to do now? Where am I going to come up with $30,000? Who am I going to borrow this time from? Because no one's answering my phone call anymore. And you panic. Everything comes. That's a part of the deal. It's a part of the process. This is what we have been signed up for. Either we signed up for it or they did it for us. It doesn't matter. That's a part of the adversity of being in duality. We're in dual world. We're going to have the good time, you're going to have the bad time, you're going to have easy time, you're going to have tough time. They're all going to come in this dimension. There is no way out. I don't care, you're a guru, you're enlightened, you're awake, you're a millionaire, you're da-da-da-da-da-da. It doesn't matter. This happens to everyone who lives in dual, dual life, duality. Even if you're fully 100% enlightened, you still have a body in a duality. Your body, your mind, your emotions are subject to duality. You're going to have to have pain and pleasure. Even if you're fully realized, it won't make any difference. You're not alone. You're not the only person. But the key is to come back to the center, come back to the source. You come back to your source, you know down deep in your source, you know what's up, you know God loves you, you know God has brought you on this path, you know you're taken care of. They're not going to leave you out. 
they didn't bring you all the way here to just leave you. It's not a part of the deal. They're taking you home. So this passage is a passage to home. And it's scary and it's frightening. It is. The times in life is frightening. You're about to lose everything. You're about to lose your arm. You're about to lose your children, your family, because you're in a lawsuit. And this big ass corporation is going to take everything. Or your ex-husband, wife is going to take everything, fairly or unfairly. It's not going to be always going our ways. Well, but we went my way for 40 years. Well, now it's not going to go your way anymore because you're in duality. Duality is going to come both sides. Now, how do I deal with this? Okay, Zarathustra, enough. You keep saying these things. Give me some tools. How do I work with it? What's in there for me? So, the best way that I recommend, there's different ways. Obviously, when you're in a situation like this, it's very hard to be silent. It's hard to go back and be still because the money's getting tight. You're getting all these deal, uh, bills, phone bill, electrical bill, gas bill, you know, water bill, TV, cable bill, things break down. Life is expensive. You have to make money to pay for all these things to just have a basic life. There's stuff there to do. You need money. Of course. So, and then it's getting tighter and tighter. And so I can't sit and meditate. Naturally, of course you can't sit and meditate. Because it's tough, because it's raining, it's storming. So what do I do? The thought comes, the mind starts to do these things, the I thought comes. What's going to happen to me? So this is what you do. And this is the pearl. Pay attention because I'm giving you the pearls. Okay, and I didn't just come to this thing overnight. 30 years, I worked my ass off and invested time, money, going sitting with different gurus and teachers, different countries, different places. You know, it's investment. That's a lot of investment because you're not working and you're not making money and you can't have a home. All of your friends are having homes, they have family, they have gone, their businesses is great. And you're just sitting there with the lungi around your, your waist, sitting with some guru in the middle of nowhere. And maybe the guru sees you, maybe he doesn't see you. But everyone else is building up their lives. You're broke. And they make fun of you. And you always have to go to them to borrow money from them. And they look at you like, eh, look at this guy is wasting his life. Naturally. So you are investing your time and money and your youth into this thing. And you don't even know if you're going to get anything out of it either. You know, you may come out of a loser at the end of the day out of it. That possibility is there because not only you didn't get enlightened, but you're broke and now your youth is gone. So now you don't have any energy to go back and build something. So you have to do whatever you have to do to make a living. So pay attention because I'm sharing with you that it took me 30 years to get it. It's not something easy. I just don't want to give it to you and you just listen to it. And, eh, okay, I'm too busy on my phone, on Tinder or Facebook or whatever. No, this is something that it, I worked very hard to get it. And now I'm sharing it with you. The I thought, your thought, me, I, Zarathustra, Suzanne, Sarah, Hilde, Monica, Ali, John, this thought comes, me, 
I only can exist, this me, this me who is afraid of what's going to happen to me because there is no money flow, I'm going to lose my home, I'm going to lose my kids, I'm 50 years old, I'm 60 years old, I'm 70 years old, at this stage in my life I'm going to be on the street or I have to go and stay with friends or whatever. Me, the I thought. Me, I is worried about something. This I thought only exists by relating itself to something else. So this is the subject, that's the object. So look at yourself and pay attention. You have to pay attention. Between this week and next week when we meet again, you need to follow this exercise and be attentive to it. Not just do it for five minutes and then leave it. Be attentive to this because this is one of the major keys to awakening and freedom. It's advanced teaching. This is not for kids. I'm not offering you some crystals or mala or mantra or da 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 da. This, all of those things was for A, B, C, D. You had to learn these things past life or earlier this life. If you come to advanced stages in your spirituality, this is advanced. This is PhD level. This is very high. Okay? So pay attention. Is the only way this I, this me, this identity that I refer to as me, which is false, exists is when it's relating itself to an object. So what it does, it, it says, I like that tree. I don't like that tree. I like Monica. I don't like Monica. I get annoyed when I go in a crowd. Nowadays when I go to a restaurant which is very busy, the noise bothers me. I don't like to be in that vibration. This me is only knows itself to relate itself to another object. Now, you want to free yourself from suffering forever and don't do anything else. Don't meditate. Don't come to any of my classes. Don't go to anyone's classes. Don't ever do any more spiritual thing in your life. Only do one thing. If you do this one thing, this is going to take you home. If you stop doing anything else, you quit everything else and just do one thing. And that thing is sever the relation, cut the relationship between the I and whether it likes something or doesn't like something. Cut that thing. So, I like that tree. I like that tree. Oh, that's a cute tree. I really like that tree. It's beautiful. I. Cut the relationship between I like that tree and that tree. So now the tree is gone. There's no more an object. Is only the subject, the I. I'm, the I cannot stay there on its own because it's a false notion. It's not real. So it cannot exist without relating itself to something else. So it has to fall back into its source. means it needs to go back into silence and where it's quiet. Okay, try that right now. While I'm getting my Instagram going on, try it. Think of yourself, think of something you like or you don't like. Someone is annoying you. Some situation you don't like. You don't like this pandemic because of its finances. It's very heavy, you're about to lose things. So you say, I'm worried about things. So I, I'm worried about things. I cut this 
severed the relationship with worry about things. Now there is nothing else. Cut that and see what happens. Try it right now. Dorothy? Yeah. The, is that right? Did I pronounce your name right? Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What, yeah. what happened? What happens when you did this? I, I noticed that my mind collapsed in a way and there were silence and um, em a way of emptiness. Beautiful. Congratulations. Well done. Anyone else? Yeah, make that your practice. Suzanne, are you there? No, your mom, your mom went to do something. Okay, we'll wait for her to come. Your, oh, there it is. Is that your, is that a son or daughter? I can't see her face. So daughter. Here oh yeah, hi. Hi. <laughs> hi. What is your name? I'm Tate. Tate, nice to meet you. I'm Zaratustra. Hey. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I switched on the light in our yeah. room. Yeah, yeah. So were you able to do this, honey? Did you have a moment to do it? Yes, I did it. And how did it work? For me, when I cut the eye, it's also silence, but it, it comes back. It comes back. Oh yeah, it comes back. It comes so, back. For the moment I can do it, but you know, tomorrow morning it's again there. Yeah, you, you just keep doing it. You get into a practice, the, the I comes, the I thought, and with the I thought comes the mind bombardments because, again, you remember what I said in halfway or beginning of this conversation? I said, everything is about me. I'm the most important person on this planet to me. So the thought of what's going to happen to me if I lose my home and I have to go on the street, it's me and my kids. What's going to happen to me? It always comes with me. Mm -hmm. So the, the, the thought of I thought is going to come again and again and again. That's why... If it was that easy, everybody would be enlightened in five minutes. You have to practice this on a regular basis. It requires attentiveness. You have to be attentive to it because it's thousands of years of identification with the I thought. For thousands of years, we're identifying with a false notion of that you are somebody separated from the source. Therefore, you're responsible for your own well-being. Since, the, okay, now you want to cut this off. It's not going to happen overnight. Sometimes, some people may, but you get into a practice of doing it. So what happens is you do this regularly whenever you remember i'm not saying every moment of your life of course that's not possible but you get in a practice of doing this regularly what happens is you're going to discover yourself one day a week from now three weeks from now a month from now all of a sudden you're going to find yourself that your mind is quiet Maybe it's not quiet all the time, but you find yourself with long patches of time. Okay? Long periods of time that you have no thoughts. It's quiet. You're at peace. And the more you do this, what happens is ultimately at the end, if you do it regularly, the I thought, this false notion of the personal authorship of your life is no longer can stand there by itself because it can only exist if it connects itself with another object because it's likes and doesn't like. So you are isolating it by cutting its relationship. 
to objects and eventually it falls down. And that's what God wants you to learn in this pandemic. That's why you're on the grill. Those two, those two things I said. But I'm going to do a very special prayer. You're going to have some good stuff coming, nice gift coming for you soon. And things are going to change. Very, very, very soon. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> You're welcome. Thank you. I uh, always, you know what, uh, since the last, I don't know, 15 or 20 years, I always had these periods when I didn't, when I can't work because of some other things, you know. And uh, always other people, they said, you could hang on there or you can you know just enjoy it because definitely it will not last long and it was so the last years it was like i don't know three months or four months and then the next job came and everything starts again so i know it it's always like going this way you know i since i started to get into this work there has been like three or four occasions that I, it, it was like, we're bankrupt. This, this is collapsing. There's no money in the account. There's no help. And I don't know, how am I going to go to Europe and do a tour? I, I only have $200 in my bank account. And there's been times of extreme frustration that I'm just telling this, giving this to God, you know, it's like, fuck you, dude, go find yourself another idiot to do your work. <laughs> I, I, I don't want to do this anymore. Let me go do be a businessman or do another way. I don't want to do this. I'm not making any money. I work my ass off. I'm running all over the world. And at the end of the day, I'm broke and I have to struggle and I have to go here and there get loans all the time because I can't carry this thing. And I was just completely frustrated. It happened seriously. And every time in the last moment when I said, I'm not going to do this, I'm done. Find yourself someone else. And they're always, they come back and say, oh, come over here, Zartus. Oh, little, little boo, don't worry about it. Let me give you a little kiss. Here, let me give you a little bit money here or whatever. And they lure you, lure you back into the business, into the work. <laughs> oh. You're not left alone. You're not going to be alone. You will be taken care of. That's the commitment that the boss makes to you. We're all taken care of, all of us, in mysterious ways. Always going to be taken care of. Always, got, always love is going to be there. Light is going to be there. We just have to go through these challenges. And that's for all of us. In whatever level we are, we have our own challenges according to our capacity of dealing with the challenge. I don't care who you are. You're Dalai Lama. You are Gautama Buddha. It doesn't matter. You're going to be challenged because you're in duality. You're in dual world. Today is economical Tomorrow is a brain tumor, there is a health issue, or someone you love passed away, or they're about to die. There's always going to be something. Sometimes things are going your way, and sometimes things don't go your way. For us is to remember that we're on this, this path, on this mission. We got this goal, and we're taken care of by the same force same source, same God 
that has gave me birth is the same one who's going to take me all the way home. So it's always about that. This whole life is about that, is to recognition that we're being carried, all is well, and that which we're looking for is already here. Our ability to love, love is here, and love will take care of us no matter what happens. It will take care of us. you just coming back to this place. Because it's easy to say these things when things are going your way. It's easy to preach it. The key is, can you maintain your status when things don't go your way? When everything is falling apart, all of your friends, family left you, you lost your positions, then God says, who are you now? Show me who you are. Can you maintain your posture? Can you maintain your status of being a prophet, of being a spiritual seeker? Or all of it was because the circus was here. And that's the key. We have to demonstrate to existence and ourselves in times like this that we're a tough cookie and we ain't going to run away. I'm going to stay focused because the only thing I want is God. That's all I want. On that note, I went half an hour above. Our academy is supposed to be an hour and 45 minutes and it went to two hours and 15 minutes, which was wonderful. I thank you all. Suzanne, thank you very much for having the courage to show up and really share your concerns with us publicly. I thank you for doing this. Thank you, my dear sister. I'm here for you. If there is anything I can do for you, please reach out to me. I love you. Uh, you're not alone. Know that there's a lot of light around you. A lot of people love you. You're a kind, loving person. You are, because I've experienced you directly, and you've been very kind to me. So I send love and light to all of you. I thank you for being here. Our next academy is going to be next Wednesday. Uh, I think I have a workshop and a shamanic healing circle sometimes in, in September. I don't know the dates. I forgot. Uh, you're welcome to write to me. My email is info at zaratustra.tv. Info at zaratustra.tv. If you have any comments, uh, anything, whatever it is, whether it's a criticism or it's praising or whatever, feel free and write it to us and I make sure I read it and uh, we'll get back with you. Um, I look forward to seeing you next week. Namaste. Oh, by the way, forgot one thing. Amir always tells me that I need to say this. YouTube, podcast, Instagram, Facebook, all of these channels, same address, Zaratustra 5D. Anyone who joins me on the Zoom, which is through our website, the system, will get a copy of this video, will be mailed to you, and will mail you some gifts like free meditations and things like that. Uh, for those of you who are watching this over Instagram or Facebook, if you want the full uh, uninterrupted uh, copy of this video, go on my YouTube channel and you can see a lot of different videos we got there. Thank you for your time, and I'll see you next week. God bless you. Namaste.